Hi, everyone. I'm Becky Parker Geist. I'm the CEO of Pro Audio Voices, Inc. Today, we're going to talk about how audiobook producers figure out what their estimate on costs are for audiobooks. Now, certainly there's going to be some variation here since I can't speak for every audiobook producer in the industry, but I can give you some uh, general standards that you'll find in the industry. The reason I decided to do this topic today is that I was recently speaking with a new client who was not yet a client at the time, but he was expressing how frustrating it was to try to understand how projects were getting priced, and how the finished length was even being calculated. So I'm going to go into a little more depth than I may have before, and certainly than uh, most people are going into, so that you can really understand what's going on when producers are quoting what your audiobook might cost. So the first piece is based on a kind of average words per minute of narrative pace. So first of all, I want to address what that average really represents and is that a good basis on which to estimate every audiobook? The industry standard usually lands somewhere around 9,200 words per hour or about 150 to 155 words per minute. Is that an accurate industry standard in terms of narrative pace? I would say no. Now, certainly many books are going to fall in that range, but there are other factors that make a really dramatic difference. One of those is the actual pace of the narrator. Now, uh, I also want to say here that every narrator does not have exactly the same pace for every book. Certainly, some books call for a quicker pace. They you know, want a little more driving action. You want to get to the point. You want to drive things home. In others, you may want to take a slower pace. You may be trying to explain something that is more complex or something that uh, or, or just you may have an audience that really requires or prefers a slower pace. So even in just those two examples of my own in talking about this topic, you can see that there's quite a difference. Now, when you get to the calculating of how fast is the pace of the narrator, that's usually, uh, usually we refer to that as words per minute, that words per minute most often is going to land somewhere between about 120, could even be a little less depending on the material. So let's say 100 words per minute to 180 words per minute. That determination is partly the narrator, but it's also partly your particular text. Some texts have a lot of big words. They take a, you know, you can only get through uh, a fewer number of words in the course of a minute than a book with a lot of short words, small words. That may sound like a simplistic kind of explanation, but it's true. Um, I learned this, um, I, or this was really driven home to me on a project that I narrated where I used what I thought was my sort of typical words per minute. I used that to calculate a price on a project that actually had a lot of big words. And what I found was that um, I was way off. And that cost me because I gave a, you know, I was a project cost. But what it really drove home for me is that you can't just come up with your own standard for a narrator or an industry standard that's going to cover every project. So the second piece that I already mentioned a little bit is about that, um, the text itself. What does it call for? And then um, 
what is your, how is your narrator going to handle that? So it's particular to the narrator, it's particular to the text. The other piece of the calculation is your word count. Now that should be based on the part of the book that will be narrated. So if, for example, you have a table of contents, an index, a glossary, um, a list of references, appendices that you're not going to include in the narration, any number of things like that, you should eliminate those before that calculation happens. So you take your, fin your word count, and then you're going to divide it by the pace of the, na the narrative pace or those words per minute. That's how you're going to come up with your estimated finished length. The other thing I want to point out is that is how dramatic a difference that can be based on your overall word count. So just as an example to give you an idea, first of all, um, if it's a really short book, then you're not going to feel that impact so much either by the particular narrator or by their pace for your text. If, however, you have a longer book, and when I say longer, um, this is the example I'm going to give, a book of even about 78,000 words, for example, which is not that long, a book of that length, even with the same narrator, but at different paces, can make a difference of an hour. If you're working with an audiobook producer who is giving you a per finished hour cost basis, then you can see how quickly that can make a huge difference. So that's the first part of this question of uh, how they calculate the finished length. Okay. The next step has to do with how do they calculate the actual pricing? Now, this is going to vary probably more than any other factor by the particular producer. And I'm gonna explain a little bit about what some of those differences might be and how they can impact your experience as the client. So first of all, one of the factors that every audiobook producer is likely to be including is some overhead cost. Every business requires some overhead simply to conduct business. That can be anything from making sure that somebody is there to answer emails, respond to inquiries, to uh, the electricity, to run the office, any number of things. So uh, employee costs, things like that. Some portion of their overhead would be included in your pricing. Again, every business needs that simply to continue to run. So I just want you to recognize that, um, that, that having a piece of that in your project cost is a good thing because producer that tries to manage without including any overhead in their pricing, they won't be in business for very long. It's just not a sustainable model. The next thing I want to cover is how does that, uh, the pricing or whatever they're offering, how is that going to reflect some of the experience that you'll have as a customer? One thing is in terms of how much service time they are allowing for you. That can mean answering your specific questions, making sure that you're updated on a regular basis as to the status of your project, keeping in touch with you and being able to respond to you. And many times, especially if this is your first time doing an audiobook, you may have lots of questions. And they may not relate only to the production itself. They may go beyond that. You may have, we get a lot of questions about uh, that relate to the marketing of the audiobook. And we want to make sure that we're helping our clients to succeed so they can have the impact that they want to have in the world. So, uh, how much time your producer is allowing to actually have that interaction with you 
is going to be reflected somewhat in their cost because they'll need to consider that that becomes a part of their overhead, but it's a different, um, it's, a, it's a component of it that they need to factor so that they make sure that they can provide the level of service that they are offering to you. Not all audiobook producers are going to be super responsive to your questions. They may not have answers to your questions. It, um, they may be trying to provide the lowest price and the most basic service, which means you're not gonna get that personalized, customized experience uh, that we do at Pro Audio Voices. Now, it's, I'm not saying that it's wrong to do it a different way. It's certainly not. There are many different models and many different approaches. So you just, as you, as the author, want to think about what is it that are your, what are your goals? And what is it that you feel you're going to need in the process so you can make sure that you're getting what you need? The other uh, aspect of this that is uh, reflected in that project cost and it's very related, but it's a question of how flexible is your audiobook producer going to be able to be with you? This can be a question of things like, when I talk about flexibility, some audiobook producers, once you deliver the manuscript and recording has started, if you want to make any changes at all, they are not gonna be included in the audiobook. You just don't have that flexibility because their systems are such that uh, they don't allow for that kind of flexibility. Pricing has to accommodate whatever level of flexibility is going to be offered. So if you're feeling again, like, oh, this is my first time, I may not know exactly what I'm doing, or I may need a little extra help, or you know, maybe I'm going to recognize once I hear my audiobook that there are some things I'd actually like to tweak a little bit. And as much as I also want to reiterate, tweaking after recording is not the best idea, not the best approach, but it can happen. And is your producer going to be able to accommodate you if in fact that happens for you? So those are a few of the elements about pricing an audiobook, how producers are figuring out what those different factors are, and also, um, you know, what kinds of flexibility um, and, and uh, customization is included. I want to mention one other thing, and this is actually pretty significant. If they're offering a kind of on the lower side of the per finished hour, it is likely that their system, their model is that the narrator will do all of their own editing. Assuming that you have a published book, you probably recognize the importance of professional editing, of being your manuscript being edited by somebody other than you. The reason for that, of course, is we're all human. You know, we. We uh, fill in the gaps in places. We misread things because we know what we intend. And so having a separate set of eyes on that manuscript is really, really valuable, extremely important if you want to have a professional manuscript. Now let's take that to the audio world. If you are an audio narrator and you're editing your own work, Yes, you actually can catch a lot of things, just like an author can in their text manuscript when reading back through. You can catch a lot, but you're not going to catch everything. It really helps to have that extra set of ears in this case to make sure that you've read the right words, that they make sense to the listener. When we're reading, sometimes you know, in the moment, in the flow, we think a sentence, a phrasing is going to be one way. Maybe it turns out that we've missed something in the beginning of the sentence that would be better reflected or make better sense of the sentence if we remembered that by the time we got to the end. So 
as some of this is like comparatives. I did this instead of that. Uh, there are many instances where if we're not paying really close attention in any given moment to the phrasing of a sentence and making sure that it makes sense, that we can be a little bit off. Having an editor listen to it afterwards can pick up on those things and can really help make it the best that it can be. So what we've talked about is how audiobook producers can price a project, usually based, most often, it's based on a generic average words per minute and the, uh, the word count of the manuscript. Here's one way to know if that's what they're doing. If you tell an audiobook producer your word count and they kick back a price immediately with what it would cost to produce it, then you know they're going with an average and in whatever their industry or whatever their standard is for quoting. If, however, the producer requires that you send their man your manuscript so they can actually do a test read with it and get a feeling for it, and they then produce uh, give come back with not just a a single price, but a range. Now you know that they have actually taken the time to test the read with your material at both a slower pace as well as a faster pace. So you can find out what that range might be. That is the way to find a proper pricing. And let me say this as well as a warning We've talked before about cost basis and how in the industry, the standard is per finished hour. Knowing how these things are priced out, if you lock yourself into a per finished hour cost basis and all they have given you in terms of their estimate is based on your word count and whatever their average is, you're at even greater risk. And the longer your book is, the more words there are in your book, the higher the risk that you're going to end up paying more than they're estimating. So uh, again, we've covered how producers come up with their pricing. We've also talked about what, uh, what things are impacted in terms of the service that they are then able to provide based on the way that they're pricing that out, the additional pieces that they're adding in to the overall cost aside from the narrator. That could be just their overhead. Some of that is how much service they're able to give you, so service time directly with you. Some of that is flexibility. And again, uh, it may it's, uh, can also dramatically be impacted by whether they have a separate editor listening to the audio. Thank you so much for being with me today. I hope that you'll subscribe to Audiobook Connection, Behind the Scenes with the Creative Teams. We're so glad to be here and providing value. If there is a topic that you would like us to cover, please reach out to us at proaudiovoices.com. We'd love to hear from you. We'd also just love to hear feedback on any episodes that you found particularly valuable and how those were valuable to you. And we'd love to hear what your biggest goal is with your current audiobook project. Thanks so much for joining us.